Aloha! I am Sandy Alnock and in today's video I'm going to show you how to stamp and color this fun summery scene since we are in the throes of summer. This is part of the Pretty Pink Posh blog hop to celebrate their anniversary. Paulina was kind enough to send me some items from the new release. There's some flowers, We've got some little toucan birds. Both of those are gonna be a lot of fun to color. If you're into stencils, she's got a couple of really great stencil sets that you might be interested in, but I decided to use both of these stamp sets. I wanted the tree and a sentiment from one of them to match with surfboards in the other. And I got out my Misty, which helps me to stamp well because I stamp terribly otherwise. And what I've done is taken a little piece of sticky note to make the sand on the bottom and then masked out the first of the surfboards so that the second one appears to be behind it and then had them masked out so that I could stamp that tree and make it look like it's also behind. Picked out a whole bunch of Copic markers to do my coloring and then just started to make the scene. Now when I had the scene in my head, it was not like what it came out to be like. It changed my mind along the way, and that's one of the fun things about scenes, is that you can make them whatever you want as you go. I decided on a kind of a sloped hillside, and that was where I began. I'm putting a little darker color right where the these little surfboards stick into the sand, like they, somebody poked them in a hole in the sand so that they would stand up. And that's why I masked off that bottom with the sticky note when I did my stamping portion. For something like a flat object like surfboards, there's when you're thinking about the shadows, there's a couple of different ways to go. You can just real simply go bottom to top and make them, you know, darker at the bottom and lighter at the top and do very simple blending. I'm going to do something a little more complicated, which is to give them a little depth. They're drawn straight on, but when you look at a surfboard straight on, it's got rounded edges to it. So I'm going to leave a little bit of highlight around that outside edge. You'll notice as I'm doing this whole thing, my shadow colors are not going to go all the way to the edge. So it's going to allow a little of that reflected light around the outside edge to appear. And I'm going to bring my, you can see I'm bringing my shadows in just ever so slightly. When you're doing small shapes like this though, on these little tiny portions, these little design sections with stripes or polka dots or whatever, you might decide, and you know this is up to you and how much you wanna get into the detailed coloring, you could just color each one of those shapes as a flat shape, use a gray to shade the whole thing all the way across, and then go over that with the base color. And I decided to color each one of those sections individually myself because I thought it would have it would keep them a little bit brighter because the gray will tend to dull things ever so slightly. And I wanted this to have a real summer brightness to it. So that's why I made this decision. But you can see there's that nice little glow appearing right around the outside edges. And it it makes the whole thing look like it's a little bit more rounded. And with the whole scene, though, I had this vision in my head. I wanted to do a rainbow. I've been wanting to do rainbows, all the pride stuff that's going on right now. That didn't happen. I had a scene that was on my iPad that I, I was going to mimic, and that didn't happen. And when you're creating scenes, a lot of times I go to, to Google, and I just Google something that I feel like drawing that day or something that the scene inspires or if I'm looking for a beach scene and I have no idea where to begin, just type in beach scene and go to the images tab and see if something inspires you to, to create something that way. But there are other times where you're gonna start drawing something and your hand is just gonna go a different direction entirely. And that's what mine did. And that's certainly perfectly okay. You don't have to know what you're doing before doing it. And that's one of those process things but it took me a long time to learn. I always really wanted to have a full idea of what it was going to look like before I started. And even with Copic markers, it happens more with watercolor to me because watercolor kind of tells me what it wants to do. But it does happen as well with Copic markers. It happens with every medium because 
you're just you're in one mode when you start it and by the time you finish you get carried away by what you're creating so here I decided I was going to put the horizontals of the water in there and then create a few waves along the way and my original thought was going to be to have an island out there in the distance like the other half of a landmass or something and that didn't materialize it, you know it was in my picture but the picture kept going away and I kept trying to <laughs> to wake my iPad up and it kept going to sleep so there you go sometimes your your technology will will try to encourage you to make something out of your head so that's really what I ended up doing here was just creating something out of my head I've done tons of water images lately if you hadn't noticed I've got underwater scenes classes not just in Copic marker but I now have the watercolor and the colored pencil versions so I had water in my head so I knew that I, I could do an ocean pretty much without having to have a reference photo for it the clouds were the part though where I found this great picture it had a big storm cloud and the storm cloud had this beautiful rainbow coming out of it and but as I was drawing this I was like you know it's just such happy colors I don't really want to add a big heavy storm cloud and the fact that my iPad kept going to sleep anyway kind of told me, well, guess what? I'm just going to do some happy clouds instead. Now, clouds are something that have color in them. They're not going to be just white because they're clouds. Clouds, they, they have poofs of all different kinds of colors. I'm going to stick with just grays. So I'm using a, a neutral number two and then adding some neutral zero to it. Notice how little of the white I'm actually going to be leaving by the time this is finished. You don't have to leave most of it white. And if you look at the clouds up in the sky, even though your head tells you that they're white, they're not really. There's, there's a lot more color in there. So these clouds came out looking really realistic because of that. So I'm going to add a little bit of zero marker in there to create some lighter areas for the waves. And then... A gel pen to add the curl of the foam on them. Never make them really consistent because if you look out at waves crashing in, they're not going to be consistent. There's going to be fat parts and thin parts and you know some that are going to disappear and then they're going to pick back up and that sort of thing. Just create just little sketchy lines. And I even kind of move some of that color with my finger because gel pen is generally, like I think of it as an acrylic, if you think of it as an acrylic ink of some sort, then it has a few seconds while it's still wet that you can move it. So if you want to just smoosh it a little bit with your finger when you're making waves, you can actually get some interesting effects. I'm using the pen to highlight those outside curves on the surfboards. And that also brings the whole surfboard together so that that highlight appears to be across all the stripes rather than you know, each stripe as a little piece. And then did some polka dotting with both brown markers and the white pen in the sand to create some of that sand texture. And all I had to do was stamp the sentiment on it and pop it onto a card base to have a really nice, simple, flat card that goes really nicely through the mail. Always like those things that don't charge me an extra stamp from the post office. There you go. Go visit the blog hop. I'm the last stop on the blog hop. There's lots of blogs before me. So if you're getting to it from me, go back to the beginning because there's always good stuff to see on blog hops. And I will see you again in a couple days with another video. Take care and have a really great day. Happy birthday to Pretty Pink Posh.